Hey guys, how you going? This is Billy Eight World, and the BF1 beta is out, which means we finally have some new guns to review. And as you guys know, I've always been a big fan of the semi-automatic, so what better way is there to start this series than to check out what I think is the best gun in this category? So the question is, which gun is the best gun? Well, in my opinion, it's hands down the German Selbstglater M1916. And that's because not only is it the most accurate semi-auto in the game at the moment, it also deals a ton of damage and has above average stats across the board. Before we start though, I should mention that if you're watching this video in the future, just bear in mind that this is beta footage and the stats might have changed. And also it is worth mentioning that there are still quite a few semi-autos still to come in the final release, so don't be surprised if this gun gets knocked off the top spot. Also, just remember that this is only my opinion, and maybe for some reason you think one of the other semi-autos is better than this one. And if that is the case, then that's fine. But as always, just make sure you let me know what you think in the comments section below, because I'd love to hear from you. Now to kick off, the M1916 fires at 224 RPM and deals 40 damage out to 20 meters, which drops off to 35 damage at 30 meters. And so basically what that translates into is a three bullet kill at all ranges or a two shot kill at close range if you manage to land a headshot. So in other words, considering it does have a fairly slow rate of fire, long range is definitely gonna be this gun's strong point, which is good news, especially on a big map like Sinai Desert, considering most of the other guns in game, except for the sniper rifles, are pretty bad at anything but short ranges. Like I said before, this gun is also the most accurate semi-auto in the game, just narrowly beating out the Mondragon with a base ADS of 1.4. And if you compare the artillery variants, the M1916 also seems to be slightly easier to control, with a vertical recoil of 1 and an even side-to-side -side recoil of 0.3. With that being said, though, I'm pretty sure the Simphic stats do take into account attachments, which at the moment aren't able to be customised, but by the looks of it, though, these variants do have the same attachments anyway, so by that logic, you'd think the M1916 would still be slightly better without them. The big difference between this gun and the Mondragon is really in terms of capacity because the M1916 is able to hold up to 21 rounds. And not just that, the M1916 also uses box magazines instead of being fed by stripper clips, which I think makes reloading just that little bit faster. I mean, sure, you don't have to reload every round in the Mondragon, but the thing is, with less rounds to spare, you'll be hitting that reload button more often. And most importantly, you'll find yourself running out of bullets very quickly, which is a massive deal because it can get you killed in close quarters. The only other semi-auto with the same 20 round box magazine is the M1907, which is hardly even comparable because it does a lot less damage. And generally speaking, with a semi-auto, you really don't want to be getting in too close anyway, because then you don't really have any sort of range advantage anymore. The problem with these guns at long range, though, is that past the 20 meter mark, the M1907 and the Cell Rigotti both take around four bullets to kill. And that might not seem like a lot more, but believe me, it does make a huge difference. And so, to be honest, once I unlock the other guns, I haven't really used anything else. Now, obviously a gun that seems to be this good is bound to have at least one flaw, and well, in this case, it's actually the spread increase per shot of 0.12, which if you compare it to the Mondragon, which only has a spread increase of 0.06, means it basically is a lot more inaccurate if you spam the trigger. To be honest though, I'm pretty used to the DMRs in BF4, so I actually didn't notice this at first, but if you're a new player, you might want to bear it in mind. And although I guess it does take a bit of practice once you do learn to pace out your shots, you'll find that ultimately this floor isn't really that bad, and it's not as big of a disadvantage as you might think. The other, I guess you could say, disadvantage of the M1916 is that currently it only has a sharpshooter variant, whereas the Mondragon has a marksman variant. And basically what that means is that if you want to use the M1916 as kind of like a semi-auto sniper rifle, then you really don't have that option yet. The main reason I kind of list this as a disadvantage is because, well, we don't really know yet if the M1916 is going to get that marksman scope in the final game. But with that being said, I think it probably is likely that it will, although I must admit with all the awesome bolt actions, it's probably not the most effective way to run this gun anyway. 
But anyway, to finish up, I should point out that before you take this gun onto the battlefield, you need to bear in mind you will need to play defensively. And by that, I don't mean camp it up, I mean just be extra aware of your surroundings and don't try and rely on your twitch reflexes to get the job done. Also, get to know where common sniper spots are because you'll find that with this gun, out of everyone else, they'll be your biggest threat. And just remember that if you do try and engage them at long range, just make sure you keep on the move and try and keep them suppressed, which will throw off their aim. When you're in CQB, though, a good tip for this gun is to try and keep your crosshair at chest height because this is where you're going to do max damage. And the reason for this is because this gun fires very slowly and so you really want to have the best reaction time possible and you don't want to be wasting bullets hitting low damage areas. Also, finally, probably the most important tip for this gun and the other semi-autos is just try and remember to stop moving before you shoot unless, like I said, you're trying to outshoot a sniper. And that's basically because your accuracy on the move is about six or seven times worse than it is when you're standing still. And this can, and often will, get you killed. But anyway, guys, that just about wraps up this quick review. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, if you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, check out the links in the description below if you want to see any more of my videos or if you want to support my channel on Patreon. And until next time, see you later and have a good one.